What's going on, everybody? It's Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And we are on Season Trace 3 of NFL Picks, Locks, and Upsets. Now, this the series on the channel hasn't always hasn't always ran smoothly. The the first season we would do lives. <laughs> and on those lives, sometimes they would cut out, and sometimes you would have three to four dudes on the couch that were over two hundred and fifty pounds, and it was not a good look. <laughs> but we got it done. <laughs> yeah, but we got it done. In season two we had cheating going on <laughs> for an NFL picks, locks, and upsets that has 13 weekly viewers. By, now, a, by a consecutive, uh, by a champion. Too. Yeah, by a champion. Quotations. Well, 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 we all look the other way. But, his picks will be in the description. We're not going live. I'd say we're all looking pretty slim. And we are here for NFL picks, locks, and upsets. Season three, we got a loaded room. Colge, this is your third season, and you're back. You got high hopes, high expectations this time around. Are you gonna win something finally? Absolutely. You've um, been in dead last place this whole time, every um, year. Yeah, I have been. And, uh, <laughs> You've been absolutely. I'm not gonna lie. I get, I get a little burnt out at the end of the season. Yep. Because uh, I just last two seasons I've been. Uh, I got. You know, I got two jobs, basically. You got a kid in the house. Yeah, <laughs> basically, <laughs> man, I got my cat I got to take care of. And uh, But I'm, I'm feeling good about this season. Uh, man, my arm feels good. You know, my voice, my vocal cords feel really nice yeah. this year. And uh, I think I'm, I, I'm ready for this season. You know, you're a fan favorite, so everybody's going to be very excited to uh, hear back from you. You know, people like Patrick Jackson. What do you got to say to your fans that you're back? Uh, hey, <laughs> um, if I'm in DraftKings, bet on me. <laughs> bet on him to win the picks this year. Mm -hmm. So. 10,001 odds, but. 10,001 odds, I'd say so. You take you take that bet every time. Then we got Lerald. Larry's in the building. He's been here since season three. I actually, I mean, since season one, we actually did the first episode of Picks, Locks, and Upsets. That's correct. Just me and you. That's right. And, yeah, it glitched out three different times because there's three different parts to episode one. Yeah. Of various, various time, time lengths. One is 36 minutes, one is 36 seconds, and the other one is 5 minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> you know, sometimes things don't go that smooth, but you know, we keep rolling with it, and roll with the punches, and get the thing done. That's what I'm saying, dude. You watch Tree Talks because we have that honest content. Nothing we give you is edited. All this no. shit's raw as fuck. It's not yeah. much, but it's honest work. It's not, it really you is. love what you do, and you never work a day in your life. Absolutely. That's right. That's what 100%. you get. That's what you get. The way it goes. And the newcomer returning to NFL picks, locks, and upsets. Barn from Barn House Productions. How you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. Barn House. You haven't been back since season one. The yeah. Browns are exponentially better than Wait they were in season one. I want to take you back to that Chad Henney run no. in the AFC playoff game. <laughs> where are you at mentally from where you were then to where you are now? Uh, a lot better. Week one, we get redemption. So I'm pretty hyped about that. I'm excited to get your takes on that game. You're lucky Chad Henney's not starting that one, though. He'd be done you up. Maybe. They should have started, Pat they should have started Chad Henney over Patrick Mahomes. Absolutely. Absolute veteran. <laughs> he's, a, he's a veteran. <laughs> yeah. That's the guy you want. It's crazy today, though. I've seen a stat today of the average like age of the starting quarterbacks, like 24. That's weird. We're only 22. And what's keeping us from taking the great iron? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Former I'm, bag boy turned quarterback, Kurt Warner, did it. I he mean, did do it. We could be former grocery shoppers turned, right. turned gunslingers. That's right. That's all I'm saying. 
But we're back for week one of picks. And I think last year, like I said, you know, there were some points discrepancies throughout the season. Not only major ones from having just just ridiculous 13-point weeks, 14-point weeks, but because I think we all kind of didn't understand the scoring system. So I, think I, this, I understood it. So I think we all kind of messed up the scoring system. Or maybe Tree just messed up the scoring system. But since Colge, uh, I think Colge wants to clarify to everybody at home how we're doing the, the scoring. Okay, so this year, for upsets, we choose one upset and one lock every week. Once you choose a team for an upset or a lock, you can't choose them again until week 11. For fits. For fits. For fits. Makes yeah. sense. Because teams get thin at that point. Yep. <clears throat> so for upsets, if you pick your upset correctly, you get two points. But if you choose it wrong, we're not going to deduct any points this No year. deductions on the upset, which I think is fair. Which is yeah. fair. You're taking a chance on a team. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought, and that's how I was keeping my points last year, mm-hmm. but I guess that's not how Last year it was, was minus one point. Yeah, yeah, I was taking points off. Yeah, I was too. Mm-hmm. So, so I guess Treve also was kind of <laughs> caught cheating a little bit. But. And then this year for locks, I, it's the same, I believe. If you get your lock correct, it's just the regular plus one. But if you get it wrong, it's minus one point. Yeah. Yep. Because if you're locking a team to win, you're almost that's a hundred percent certain. You're like all the gamblers on TikTok that you have to follow. You know, that's your hit of the week. And if you get it wrong, you're minus one point. And are we doing the tie? What it, yeah, pitch what you wanted to do, or what you, what we're doing for the tie, because we'll do it for a tie. Are we going to do it? Yeah, we're going to do it, guys. I'm down. Okay, yeah, so for, down. if you want to choose a tie, you can choose it. But if you don't get it, it's minus one point. Yeah. And then if you get it correct, it's plus three points. Because how often does a tie happen? If you guess a tie, I mean, you kind of... That's a gamble. You deserve, that is such a gamble. It you is. deserve three points if you choose a tie correct. Exactly. I mean, there's there's some. I don't I don't think I'm gonna choose a tie this year. I th- I think there's some I think good. It's stra- too hard. There's there's some good strategy to use with the tie though. Yeah. I mean, if you're in the shitter by week thirteen, usually me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When Colger's at his usual spot mm-hmm. by week thirteen, and he needs to make up some points, you know, he might predict a tie. Or two. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might predict a tie or two, make up six points for the first ever week with two ties. Mm-hmm. Colge gets six points, and that's off of two games. That'd be nuts. That's that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Playing, playing risky. But we're here, and it's week one of the season. We've been waiting for a long time to get here, and we're kicking things off with Dallas and Tampa Bay. And personally, I think people are forgetting how good Dallas was with Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott was on pace to break records last year. And people I've seen say that Dak Prescott is a top 10 QB and Dak Prescott can break records and do this with his arm. And people are saying, you're dumb, you're stupid. I'd be hard pressed to say that Dak Prescott is not a top 10 QB. I like him, I like the targets they have in Dallas, and I like the Cowboys. I hope Ezekiel Elliott bounces back, but on the flip side, Tom Brady, Tampa Bay. I think Antonio Brown is allegedly looking the best he's ever looked in camp. If Tom Brady said he's looking like how he's looking in Pittsburgh form. You got Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, the whole team from last year. They're too good. Tampa Bay wins this one, but it's close. Offensive fireworks. I'm going to say 31-24. Cole, Judy got. <clears throat> At first, I was thinking the Cowboys. Not gonna lie, right, but dude. I played. I played a little Madden today. <laughs> nineteen. Madden nineteen, and I have Dak Prescott. It's my first year. He's a free agent on my Madden. He went zero for seven, two interceptions. <sighs> and then I thought to myself, how can I bet against the Bucks? So for season three of the Crew Picks, I'm choosing the Bucks in the first lock of the season. Wow! The box. Early using your lock. Early. Absolutely, I want to start it off with a bang. Starting off season three with a bang for his lock of the week, Barnhouse. What do you got? Uh, I like the Cowboys. 
Uh, I like Dak a lot, but Dak is coming back with no preseason at all from a big injury, and he's going to play it safe week one. So I think the Bucks are going to take this, so I'm going with the Bucks. Playing it safe, Tampa Bay. Well, this fuck, it's looking like we might be calling out the first you-know-what. Oh, we got to see first. The, the first you-know-what of week one. Larry, who do you got? Well, I'll tell you right now, I think Dak Prescott is the next. He's a 5,000-yard Tony Romo. Mm. He's the. That's a good comparison. He's going to be straight 8-8. Eight and eight. And that division, it, it won't be good enough because I think Fitz Magic's going to run wild that this year with that defense. They're a good team, and I'm just think I'm going to take Tampa Bay because this team's steamrolling. They're a great team, and you know, it's everybody's there again. Why not run it back? I've heard even Gronk's in better shape too. Oh my. And that's what you don't want to hear. I mean, Mike Evans, he's always been a 1,000-yard receiver. That's what I'm saying. Chris Dude, Godwin's every a Every single dog. year, every 1,000-yard receiver AD. since he's been in the league. And, and then, he's a, and then he's if Gronk's back in for, former shape, because he did have a whole year now, it's, he did come out of retirement. You know, Gronk's a partier. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Every every now year, he's ready. Every year, I'm straight up astonished how late you can get Mike Evans and Chris Godwin in fantasy. And every year you see guys say, oh, there's better options, there's better options. Those motherfuckers will finish top ten in fantasy for receivers every year. Every, every year. Every year at the beginning of the year, I always doubt Tom Brady. Yeah. I'm, I'm done doing that. You can't doubt him anymore. I mean... I'm done with it. <laughs> it's too good. If I could choose him for a lock every week, I, I think I'd do it. Almost. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, and that is going to be our first of the season. Starframe! Star $5 charity of your choice. We are keeping tracks of Starframes this year for the whole entire year. So that is Starframe number one, and it's the first one. And the next matchup, there's a lot of games like these that are just straight up 50, 50 fucking 50 to me. We got the Seattle Seahawks going up against the Indianapolis Colts. Is Carson Wentz playing? Mm -hmm. Yes, he's Absolutely. playing week one. I was announcing him yesterday or today. Is he? Okay. Yeah. He is. See, I this is another thing too. I will come into every year down the Seahawks, I swear. Like at the beginning <laughs> at the beginning I'll be like, you know, they're not that great on paper, but they still find a way to make it work. Russell Wilson's a winner. And but, I and I don't buy the Colts. I haven't bought. I that's one of the the hills I've been wanting to die on this year. There's a couple, and and we'll get we'll get we'll get into most of them during this video, obviously. But I don't think Carson Wentz is that great. I think the injuries are going to play a factor in his game, and I think this is going to be a close a close matchup. But I'm going to have the Seahawks winning this one. Colts, who do you got? <clears throat> Last year I chose the Colts week one for my upset. Or no, I chose the Jags over the yeah. Colts. Excuse me. I, I don't see Carson Wentz doing anything in the league anymore. The injuries are just too much. I really for don't, him. and I feel bad for him because he had a lot of potential, but I don't see him doing much. He's probably going to throw two, three picks. Russell Wilson's going <clears> to <throat> throw four or five touchdowns probably. So you're thinking. I, I got the Seahawks in this one. So you're thinking this isn't, isn't even going to be close? I really don't think it's going to be that close. Bold prediction of the week: five touchdowns for Russ. Mm-hmm. One of them's gonna be rushing. Somebody's getting free groceries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. So that's a rush. That's, that's a season two thing. Dude, I love it. We're continuing jokes from other seasons. We're such. We're so well written. All right. This is why you show up. Bart, who do you got? Uh. I'm going to go Seahawks right away just because I hate Carson Wentz. A buddy of ours used to hype him up a lot. So it's just like straight away. And I just don't think the Colts roster compares to the Seahawks roster. All right. And Larry, who do you got in this one? Well, I'm, you know, here's the problem. is Carson Wentz is going to play. But the Colts are one of those teams that starts out every season that you just they're just not good on paper. And then they play good in the in the game. Like the first few weeks, every season. It seems like that's one of those teams. But I think Seattle's just got too much form. Quentin Nelson's out. 
I also, uh, Eric Fisher, the guy who's supposed to fill in for Costanzo since Costanzo retired, he's got an Achilles injury he's been fighting, coming back from. He hasn't been practicing. I just don't think they they're got enough for Seattle. I think DK gets two touchdowns and 150 yards to start the season. All right, so the second game. Second. Star frame! Five dollars charity of your choice. Two star frames in a row, tree. What do you think about that? Two back-to-back star frames. I was actually going to go back in the chat and see, because we will have two description picks this year. One, one thing that I will say is we're going to have... Ariana kind of be the the middle ground. She's gonna be our Madden simulation because she she puts no thoughts to her picks and just throws them together. So we're gonna we're gonna see how our picks compare to hers by the end of the season, and we're gonna see how Cam picked and look at that we would have had two back to back star frames anyway yeah. with Cam in the building. Yep. Yeah. Coming up next we have the Jacksonville Jaguars against the Houston. Texans. I said this in my preview today, because I did it earlier. For Trevor Lawrence and Urban Meyer, who are two college legends, this is about as perfect of a college-like week one game you can get. When you're a big school, you get paid, you know, you pay all these little schools to come up to you and get your ass kicked. There's very few teams that are worse than the Jags. The Texans... Maybe one of the teams that are worse than the Jacks. So to have a game like that that they might win week one in a coaching staff that I think a team is really buying into is really good. Do a lot of confidence for the team. I got the Jags winning. I think it will be kind of close because I, I don't want to I don't want to shit on Tyrod Taylor because I do like Tyrod Taylor. So I think the final score is going to be 27-21 Jags. Cole, true to you. Um, yeah, I think the Jags might. I think the Jags are going to win. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to throw two touchdowns, one interception. Tyrod's going to throw one touchdown, but they're going to miss the extra point. I think it's going oh, to be Lambeau. I He's think, had a rough preseason. I think it's going to be 14-6. 14-6? And, and I think uh, Jags might have a little confidence after that. Who knows? Might, might get them up going, going uphill. A little momentum. I'm going to be very upset if the Jags come out and only score 14 points. I won't lie. Barnhouse, who do you got? I'm going to have to go with the Jags because I think Trevor Lawrence and Urban Meyer are going to want to come out and impress the fan base right away. So they're going to try really hard. And I do love Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor has been in a lot of places in this league. I just don't feel like he has the, the care to try to win week one right off the bat. See, and I was saying, like, I love Tyrod Taylor to death. I do and, too. And, like, I won't ever shit on the guy. I don't even know what it is. There's just some quarterbacks that you love like that. Tyrod Taylor is one of those guys. But, I mean, he hasn't played a meaningful game in, like, what, four, three, four years? Maybe even more. Yeah. And, and the fact is... <laughs> it's all been stuff that he can't do anything about. Yeah, and the fact is, he lost the playoff game to Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles isn't, I don't even think he's on the fucking team right now. And he, he lost. The Rams? No. no. He got cut from the Packers. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> he, he lost to Blake Bortles. He's not on a roster. So what makes you think that Tyrod Taylor is going to be a serviceable quarterback? Larry, who do you got? Well, I'm taking the Jaguars. Uh, T-Law is going to have a, he's going to have a decent game. I do like the Jags receivers, but I really do think they're going to bounce on James Robinson. And I, I think did. James I Robinson's going to have a great game. I think he's going to be a dog. And this team's just going to have a good, good like, bounce back, that good vibe feeling to start the season 1-0. It's good. And last season we finished, we started 1-0, and we went 1-15. So hopefully that does not happen this year. But this is our third Star, Star Frame. frame. $5 charity of your choice. Starting off with back-to-back-to-back Star Frames. And, you know, even though this game's kind of, I think, a, a split down the middle game, I think this is still one that, uh, well, has star, has star frame possibility. We got the Philadelphia Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons. I think there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game. 
Like, I'm talking, like, final score 38-41. Something like that. Something crazy. Maybe they'll give us a score of Gami. You know, a score we've never seen before. We all root for a score of Gami. Calvin Ridley, my first bold prediction of the week. If you have him in fantasy, start him. He's going to get 200 yards and three touchdowns. And the Falcons are going to beat the Eagles. I think Jalen Hurts is ass. I think think Gardner Minshew is going to get the start eventually in Philadelphia. And he just keeps, keeps going to cities that are just perfect for him. Just absolutely perfect for him. He went to Wazoo, dude. Wazoo, cult classic, dude. Mm-hmm. People are going to love you there. Jacksonville, the southern personality, perfect. He's a Florida man, yeah. for sure. And then he goes into Philadelphia, just passionate, tough crowd. That man has a, has thick skin, doesn't make mistakes. Thick thighs. Yeah, he's... He, he, well, I'll be honest with you, I was kind of disappointed in their move to trade for Gardner. Just because Joe Flacco has... You know, Shut it, up. 33 pass attempts, 50, 50 out of 50. 33 for 50. Great. 66%. Not bad. <laughs> guess what? Threw for 500 some yards, five touchdowns, no picks in the preseason. And guess, he's 36. Well, guess what? That's great numbers. I'm just saying, those are starter numbers right there. It is also the preseason. There was He was playing number ones. Because he, he was starting. Uh Cole, well, what do you got for this one? Um, it doesn't matter what I pick, honestly, because the last two seasons, I always p- pick the Falcons games incorrectly. Oh, I, they're hard to pick. If, I'm, if I choose the Falcons, they get blown out. If I choose against the Falcons, I always say I'm done choosing the Falcons. They win by a lot, so it doesn't matter what I choose. I will lose this week. Um, I'm choosing the Eagles. Oh, there you go. Uh, no, no rhyme or reason. It's just... I. This is a game for me that it doesn't matter what I think. You know what I think this shows, at least in my opinion? I think it's the discrepancy between the the bottom of the AFC and the bottom of the NFC, right? Because you look at the last game we picked, and I'm going to attack my own team a little bit. The bottom of the AFC, Jags and the Texans. Bottom of the NFC, the Eagles and the Falcons. The Eagles and the Falcons would both absolutely body the Jags and the Texans. Yep. <laughs> so, so it's like there is the NFC is way more at like I'd say the AFC's yeah the NFC is way more talented overall. Yeah. I'd say the AFC is kind of top heavy, but even then the top heavy part of the NFC is just way better. But yeah, it's, it's been like that for years. Yeah, and, but that, I mean those two back to back matchups, perfect example. Barn, who do you got in this one? Uh, I'm gonna go the Falcons because. I think Kyle Pitts is, like, the real deal. And if I do, he, too. If he is the real deal, they're going to feed him a lot, and he's going to have a good game, and they already have Calvin Ridley there. The Shield will have a good game. The Eagles, I just – their quarterbacks are just not it. Their wide receivers are kind of average-ish. So it's just like, I don't – Falcons all the way. All right, and Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Falcons because if there's one thing that you can rely on for Matty Ice, it's that he's throwing for like 400 yards, yep. <laughs> three touchdowns, and it's going to be a damn barn burner. And the Falcons have to rely on an outside kick. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah Some stupid. Yeah. Some stupid. And, you know, I just like, I do like their offense. I like Kyle Pitts. I like Calvin Ridley. I do think this is like reminiscence of they're building something towards what Julio, Roddy, and Tony G uh, yeah, was doing, for real. and that's exactly what you need for Matty Ice if you want to have him go out and try to win a Super Bowl anytime soon. I, I think they started out one to zero, beat because I, I just don't like the Eagles or anything they got going for them. Really, yeah. I don't like their offense at all. Except I like Minshew, yeah. but I don't like the rest of it. And that's just straight facts. So, fair enough. One to zero Falcons. So that was the first game we didn't have a star frame for. Thanks, Colge. No problem. You guys are going to get that, that pick anyways. And Colge already put himself at the gutter. <laughs> yeah, this is either going to put Colge at the top or the bottom to start off the week. All right. Coming up next, this is one game I circled as uh, one of the games I, I want to watch or keep an eye out for. I think this is going to be one of the better games of the week. We got ch- the uh, Chargers against Washington. Washington slept on, man. 
They, they could win double-digit games this year. I don't even care what you say. They got a top-five defense, a top-ten receiver, and a top-ten running back who are both super young. Once this team kind of transitions away from Ryan Fitzpatrick, whatever that is, they're going to be a Super Bowl contending team. And they got a great coach with Ron Rivera, but on the flip side, the Chargers have a great coach, a great young quarterback, and I think, you know, when Washington's playing the Chargers, they're kind of looking at them like this is the direction we want to go. So, you know, if I if I could pick a tie just based off of two teams that I don't know who to choose, this would be how it is, but I don't want to risk losing the point. So I'm going to go with the football team because I think Eckler is not going to play this week. At least that's what I see, and it sucks because he's my RB1 in a fantasy fucking draft with you fuckers that I didn't even draft running back heavy. So that's going to hurt me in fantasy. I'm about ready to send you a trade. I've been looking at it the past <laughs> few days. I did draft running backs, and I drafted lots of them. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm a... Uh, I'm not looking forward to that, but I'm taking uh, I'm taking Washington in a close one, close one. Cold two, you guys. I love Justin Herbert, man. I, I love him, and I I think he's gonna be one of the next top guys, man. I don't know about Hall of Fame status, but like at least in this next generation of QBs, I think he's up there, man. And I hate betting against Washington. I love Washington. Yeah. And Fitzpatrick, the starter. Yeah. It's hard to bet against him, especially in the like first five weeks. And he looks as happy as he's ever been. First five weeks. He in his first couple of weeks of the season, he's always the best. He's always the best, yeah. but I, I don't think I can choose against the Chargers. I think Justin Herbert's gonna throw like four touchdowns, four hundred and sixty seven yards, oh. and I think it's it's gonna be a barn burner because Fitzpatrick's gonna throw three touchdowns. Barn who do you got? Uh, I'm going to take Washington. Uh, you're going to see this a lot this season. I don't like the Chargers, so I'm going <laughs> to pick against them a lot. And uh, I like Fitzmagic in the beginning of the season, so I think we're just kind of screwed at that point. And Larry, who do you got? I'm taking Washington. Just point blank period. I mean, this is the first time that Fitzmagic's going to have the whole year to himself. Barring, barring if he throws like five interceptions in a quarter, I think that's the I think that's the only thing that'll ever bench him. But I really do think this is the first year where he'll just be able to unleash it. I love the offense he has. He's got Logan Thomas. He ran the most routes for a tight end last year. I I just think this offense is good. They got everybody's young. Everybody's good, and I do like the Chargers. They added Corey Lindsley on the offensive line. I think that's. I think it's just going to be a barn burner of a game. Jared Cook just got added to the offense. I think it's going to be like 38-31, to 31, and I think Fitzmagic wins the shootouts. Because he always does in the early weeks. These next two, those last two games, man, Cole just is going to make your lead or break your lead right there. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers going up against the Buffalo Bills. I know Cole just excited for this one, so I'm going to let you take this away first. I mean, Steelers are the Steelers this year. I mean, we still have a pretty good defense. We're still going to get sacks, man. We're going to get five sacks this week. Yeah. I can almost promise that. Bold take of the week. We're going to get five sacks. I, I just don't know about Big Ben anymore. Yeah. You know, it's time to start Haskins. It's It might be. I don't know. I still don't trust Haskins. I would love if he could sit maybe a couple more years even though I don't really have the trust in Big Ben. But uh, I'm choosing the Steelers as my upset, the first upset. Steelers upset of the week. Barn, who do you got? Well, I'm going with the Bills because the Steelers' offensive line just got drastically worse during the offseason. I don't think Big Ben is it no more. Uh, I like the Bills. They're young. Good. They're coming in ready and hot. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming in ready and hot. Hot and ready, just like Little Caesars. Hot and ready. Sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag sponsor the pod. Pizza, pizza. 
please reach out to Bond Yeah, 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 yeah. Any any inquiries, reach out to at Big Bar Productions at yahoo.com. <laughs> Gmail. <laughs> at hotmail.com. Larry, who do you got? <laughs> I'm taking the Bills. Uh, I just think I love I love the way Cole Beasley's been playing with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's looked like a dog. He got fi- 52 yards off four catches in the last preseason well, he's game. Unvaccinated. He's ready. To, he's ready to <laughs> rumble. And I think him, rumble. Emmanuel, him, Emmanuel Sanders, Stephon Diggs. That offense is too much for the Steelers I defense. Love Stephon Diggs. They're really good. It's a really good team mm-hmm. there. And I just don't trust Big Ben anymore. I like Najee. I think Najee's going to be one of those guys who might get like. Maybe a thousand, both, a thousand rushing, a thousand receiving. I think they're going to use them that much this year, but I just think the Bills have too much for them. Yeah, if you chose Najee Harris in your in the first round of your fantasy, not a bad pick. Congratulations. In my eyes, I am going to take Buffalo, but I think this year is going to kind of show, you know, what the Steelers are, what Big Ben is. Uh, I think Big Ben has an opportunity to go out and show out and show that he's not washed. But if he comes out and shows that he's washed, then I think it's official. You know, the jury's not its not out on it anymore. He's washed, and this might be his last year. Coming up next, we got the San Francisco 49ers and the Detroit Lions. I'll kick this one off. I'm going to lock the 49ers over the Detroit Lions. I think the Lions are going to be absolutely just a monstrosity this year. I think they're the worst team in the league. Uh, yeah, I don't even think the Niners are going to be that great either. I think they're they're <laughs> they're one of the more overrated teams in the league. But I mean, I'm looking down the schedule and the, the chances of an upset for something that could be a lock is just too probable. And I think as far as a team that has a, the most for sure route to victory, it's the 49ers. So it's not even a team thing or what I like more in the matchup. It's just pure science. Cole, who do you like? Uh, all of last year you said Jared Goff was the best. And you said the best of all time uh, game managers or game planner. What did you say? Game manager. Game manager. And I think he can do that with Lions. I think he can do that with Detroit. With what? I don't you know, know what? They don't have Marvin Jones. They don't got Kenny Galladay. I'm just saying, man. Watch it happen. You got DeAndre Swift. I got Detroit. What? Yeah. Dude, you were just either going to... It's crazy <laughs> with these last couple picks, dude. You were going to... You were aiming for the stars in week one. Uh, they're all realistic. <laughs> they actually are, dude. Like I said in the <laughs> beginning, like... There's some games here that are seriously like 50-50 for all's out of the hat. Barn, who do you got? Uh, I got the 49ers. I think they're just way better coach than the Lions. The Lions roster is just nothing compared to the Niners right now. The Niners are in one of the toughest divisions in the league, and the Lions are not even competing in their division. So it's just I got to take the Niners. All right, Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Lions for my upset of the week. Oh my goodness. A Thank goodness. Finally I'm taking, somebody agrees yeah, with me. I'm taking the Lions. I don't care if DeAndre Swift's out for the week. I don't care. I think Jared Goff has the has played this team multiple times. He knows what he's playing. I like TJ Hawkinson. I like Jamal Williams. He signed there from the Packers last this offseason. I like that running back. I think they got some pieces there enough to get the job done. And I think they're going to pull it off. Dan Campbell is going to get a dub week one with the Lions. Want to know? I was not going to expect. I was not expecting that one to be the first split of the week. That's crazy. Coming up next, we got the Minnesota Vikings and the Cincinnati Bengals. And I really wish, really wish Cincinnati would fix their offensive line because I think they would have one of the more exciting offenses in the league if they did fix that offensive line um but if we are talking about exciting offenses minnesota has it cincinnati doesn't have a great defense i think minnesota hangs 40 on them and cincinnati gets blown out i got minnesota 
Cold Treat you got? I'm going to have to agree with you, Treve. I love the Vikings. I don't think I picked against them last year. I love Justin Jefferson. I love uh, Mr. Thielen. Kirk Cousins. Kirk, Kirk Cousins. He's kind of like a crew QB. We, yeah, we all he's a like dog. Him, I, think. I don't know about Barn. <laughs> you never but, know uh, about Barn. Yeah. The Bengals, I don't think J- Joe Burrow is even playing. He is. is he still he dead is. or he's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he could, uh, he could be. I don't, I don't believe in Joe Burrow. I'm going to be one of those guys. I don't, mm. I don't have big trust in him. And I hate the Bengals. <laughs> They're my number one most hated team in the league. So I'll, I will always bet against them. Picking the Vikings, Minnesota. It's a safe team to bet against. Barn, who you got? Uh, I'm going to have to choose the Vikings. I just don't think the Bengals are ready yet. They they didn't improve their offensive line very much. They, they're they just they're too young. They're not ready to compete against the Vikings right away, which are a well-coached team. They have a true QB to lead them right now. They have a really good running back that's going to come in and probably be one of the best in the league this season. I forgot about Didn't that Sheldon one. Rankin sign back there? I mean, Sheldon Richardson? Yeah, he's on back. Yeah. And Lerald, the Jerome? I'm taking the Vikings. I think the Bengals' offensive line is the exact key of why this game's not going to be close. I, I do exact. I like T. Higgins. I like Tyler Boyd. I, I don't know about Jamar Chase yet. The jury's out on that one. I don't really like him, so I'm, I'm a little bit on him. But uh, I just think the Vikings' offense is too much. They're stealing. Jefferson's a dog. I love Dalvin Cook. And... They just brought back basically everybody that's made that de- defense a playoff defense in the past few years. They got back Sheldon Richardson, Everson Griffin. They got all these people back just to run it back with that defense. And Pat Pete's there. I think Pat Pete gets a pick six. Let's go. Full First week. Of the week. <laughs> First week with the Minnesota Vikings. He's going to the house. How many? Bye bye, Joe. How many is he going to have? Oh, he's just going to have one pick. Oh, just that's it. Yeah, he's, that's all he needs. Okay. He just wants six. He just wants. That's all everybody wants in the league. Mm-hmm. So, for the Vikings, that's going to bring us our fourth star frame. Five dollars charity of your choice. Coming up next, we got the Jets going up against the Panthers. We got Sam Darnold going up against his former team. And, like I said earlier, there's going to be some bold takes or some takes that I've said during the off season, or that I've said for a couple seasons now, yeah. on a hill that I'm willing to die on. And one of those hills are, and I've made a whole ass <laughs> video about it even, is that Sam Darnold is garbage. Absolute trash. Bottom three to bottom two to bottom one quarterback in the league. And it doesn't matter what his situation was. He makes the situation and to prove that further point, at home, in week one, with all those weapons that he has, he's going to lose to a rookie quarterback that plays for his former team in my upset of the week. I got the Jets taking down the Panthers in Sam Darnold's revenge game where he throws two interceptions and, in like, 211 yards. Culture to go. Trevin, I, I think I'm going to have to agree with you, man. I, I've been on the same hill as you. <laughs> Sam Darnold is bad. I don't care what any, anybody says. He is bad, and he makes any offense worse. I, the Jets. The Jets are going to win by uh, 21 points. 21 points. Bard, who do you got? The Jets have nothing on their roster to even compete against the Panthers right now, and I can't believe that you think the Jets even have a chance. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The Panthers are going to win, and I am willing to lock that in. That's your lock? lock? Yes. Me and Bard going head-to-head with the upset and the lock when he... Oh, God, the screaming is going to start before the Browns game even begins <laughs> when Zach Wilson takes down Sam Darnold in the morning games. Larry, who do you got? I'm on the train with you guys are so wrong about Sam Darnold. <laughs> you guys are absolutely off your rocker about him. I mean, he he went almost, I think it was 10-6 and six with a defensive-minded head coach, Todd Bowles, and his only weapon was who? 
Robbie Anderson. Who does he have now? Robbie Anderson. Oh, he'll have over on. He's got Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson's going to have 1,000 yards. He's going to have C- CMC's back for the season. And I love this offense. I think they're way too much for the Jets. I don't like Zach Wilson's chances when he doesn't got Jamison Crowder playing because COVID took him right on out of the game. And I don't think they have a good run game because guess what? Do you know any of the running backs? I sure don't. Carter. Got yeah. him on my fantasy Oh, yeah, and, t- and Telvin <laughs> Coleman, who's buried behind a bunch of rookies. Yeah. So uh, I just don't like – I like Salai. I think it's going to take him a couple years to build that – a team with the Jets, and I don't think it's this year. That's who's running that? Yep, Robert from the no, defensive coordinator for the I, I did forget about CMC for a sec, but I still have the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> and Sam Darnold's going to bounce back this year. Nope. Coming up next, we got the Arizona Cardinals going up against the Tennessee Titans, and this is another one I have circled for a game of the week. I like it. I like this matchup. Larry... Why don't you tell us why this isn't a good matchup? Because I know you're way more hard on your team than oh, yeah. everybody well, in this room will be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Cardinals just don't have it, guys. Let's just point blank, period. We ain't got it. Their DH is about to steamroll us for probably 200 yards. We don't have any corners to cover Julio Jones or A.J. Brown, and they're both studs. So uh, I expect them to have probably 100 yards apiece, at least. So I'd I'd say if you have any of Titans starters in your fantasy team, you start them. Because that's just best for business. Uh, I think we're going to get steamrolled at the Titans. I think we're going to look lethargic. I think D-Hop's going to look bad. I think A.J. Green's going to look bad. I think we're just going to play bad. We're going to start out 0-1. So I think the game's going to be a lot closer than that, personally. But I'm still going to take the Titans. I wish the Cardinals would knock them down a peg, maybe take first place in the division. But I'm going to take Tennessee. Cole, Judy, you got? DH. 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 194 rushing yards, 67 receiving yards. Tannehill. Probably my favorite quarterback of all time. Oh, yeah, he's up there. And nasty boy Ben Jones nasty just got activated Jones, off the AJ COVID Brown. List. Dude, the so, Titans are... I mean, once Big Ben retires, the Titans might be my favorite team. No, just kidding, guys. <laughs> but I love the Titans. Uh, Titans are going to win by at least three scores. Big barn house, who do you got? <clears throat> I'm going to go with the Titans. I think they're the, the better-built team. I think that the, the Cardinals could beat them. It's just, I'm just going to have to trust my gut and go with the Titans. <laughs> they couldn't preseason. So for the fifth, Star Frame! $5 charity of your choice. Titans deliver. Coming up next is that redemption game that we were talking about earlier to kick off the afternoon games. We got the Cleveland Browns. We got the Kansas City Chiefs. I can almost guarantee you Jim Nance and Tony Romo will be on the call. Yikes. Barn, who do you got? Uh, I'm going – I'm locking this in as my upset. I am choosing the Browns right away. I think we could have beat the Chiefs in the playoffs. They had an illegal hit. Didn't call it. Some bull crap would have put us up TV. Chad Henney would have never had this stupid <laughs> ass run. It would have never mattered. I think we're gonna beat the Chiefs. I I just really do. I want us to. I I think we could. It's just I gotta come into the season with high hopes. Culture to get. <clears throat> I wish. I wish I could choose the Browns. But the Chiefs, they're they're coming back off the Super Bowl L. Yeah. And that's hard, so they're going to want to show that they could be Super Bowl champions. They're going to come out hard on the Browns. The Browns are not going to just sit there and, you know, take it. It's going to be a somewhat close game. It's going to be seven points. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Nick Chubb, he's going to have 119 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns. But I got the Chiefs. I mean, yeah, the Chiefs. Who do you got? I'm taking the Browns. 
I think there's too many question marks with the Chiefs. I feel like they changed a lot of people over. They had they had a lot of changes to their team this off season, and I think the Browns instead of changing people over just added to their roster. They had they still have the same sort of people. They're still getting people that they got back from draft selections a few lose, years. They didn't lose a single offensive player. Yeah, and Grant Dell Pitt's back. A lot of those people who are back, they're just adding to that defense. I like this team. I think they're ready to roll week one. And I think they beat the Chiefs. I think it's going to be close as hell. It's probably going to be like 45 to 38. It's going to be a barn burner. So I'm going to take Cleveland as well. I think the thing is with these regular season redemption games, is the loser of the game that mattered like in the playoffs always wins in the regular season. Almost every time. Like when we played the Patriots in the, like the next season, after we lost to them when Miles Jack wasn't down, we won. You know, when the Super Bowl rematches that play in the week one, usually the loser of that game wins. So I think just based off of that, Cleveland wins. It'll be a close game, but I think Cleveland takes it. And I also think the Chiefs are talking too much smack, saying they're going to go undefeated in this season. Watch them go 0-1-1. That'd be the perfect one. Shut up. Coming up next, we got the Miami Dolphins going up against the New England Patriots. Tua versus Mac Jones. Two Alabama quarterbacks. And and only one with potential. And it's crazy because Tua had the I already I think I know which one you're talking about, but we'll we'll go we'll go to when you get get to you. But and it's crazy because Tua had the better college career. But Mac Jones, I think, is gonna be the better pro. He's in a better situation. New England has these sleeper players that per that yeah that could be really good, and I I like Mac Jones, man. I see what he can do in the in the preseason, and you know Tua basically is entering a rookie season. You know he got taken out, put back in, taken out, put back in. It's at, it's at, it's fucking at Gillette Stadium. Bill Belichick doesn't fucking lose in Gillette Stadium to AFC East opponents, bro. No, no way. I'm taking New England. Cold shooty guy. I'm going to have to agree. I think New England's got this, man. Bill Belichick knows what he's doing. They cut Cam Newton. I mean, I don't know. They have to see something in Macadelic Jones. And yeah. I'm choosing New England. I, I do love a good lefty quarterback. Though. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, it's hard to bet against a lefty. <laughs> I'm a lefty. <laughs> Barn, who do you got? Uh, I don't like the Dolphins' offense. I like their defense. But I kind of have, like, the same reasoning for the Jags. Is I think the Patriots are the rookie QBs coming out week one. They're going to want to win week one and, like, impress the crowd with their rookie QB. So Bill Belichick's going to he's gonna come up with a game plan that's just going to totally dominate the Dolphins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bill does not want to lose with his rookie quarterback week one at home. No way. No. Larry, who do you got? Well, I'm taking the Patriots because all these defensive starters, they came back this year. They got Dante Hightower back. They got a bunch of studs back. Even though Stephon Gilmore's out, I still like J.C. Jackson and all their corners. They, I mean, they're just the lights-out team. It's even better now. They keep getting people back. So I love their offense, too. Bill just said, let me spend this year. He had the, yeah. enough money to do it, so might as well build a whole – stack offense for a young rookie QB. And this is a team this is, uh, it reminds me exactly of the Dolphins last season. They're going to just groom and go around this quarterback and push him to heights that shouldn't be done by rookie QBs, but guess what? It's going to happen. I think they're going to make the playoffs and I think they'll, they'll be maybe even taking the number one seed from the Bills yeah. if they push that hard. Because th- this team's that good. And I think the Patriots take it in Gillette. It comes down to being well coached. I mean, who else? Who and else is? Uh, two is just bad, man. Dude, yeah, rookie, he's bad. I feel like rookie QBs love their tight ends too, and there are some good tight ends on that roster. It's a complete confidence uh, killer for any quarterback who gets pulled out of a game in a game situation like that. They relied on Ryan Fitzpatrick way more than they should have if they wanted to start the rookie QB, and I think that's just going to kill Tua's opportunities in the league. Alrighty, and I think that's going to bring us to number number six. Right? Well, this, 
On the on the on the name? I think that's six, right? Yeah, yeah. Six Star Frames! Five dollar charity of your choice! I had to make sure it was six. That's why I was like, six, six. Coming up next, and I just want to say this, you know, uh, I, I let my Jags fandom show often. You know, I don't, I don't try to hide it. People go around saying the Jags and the Texans is the worst week one game, blah, 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 blah. This is the absolute shit. Unless you are a Broncos fan or a Giants fan, there's absolutely... And even people are afraid to get fucking Saquon, dude. So, like, this game doesn't even have any fantasy value. There's, like, no reason you should, on Sunday, at 1.25 p.m. through 4.55 o'clock, turn your TV to the Denver Broncos versus New York Giants game. The Broncos are lucky they're not playing Drew Locke because this game could have been the battle of the two most atrocious quarterbacks in the league, a.k.a. the list of the only two quarterbacks that are worse than Sam Darnold. The Broncos... Oh, Teddy Bongwater. Yeah, Teddy, Teddy Bongwater, who is a crowd favorite. <laughs> the Panthers should have never got rid of him. Maybe they would beat the Jets this week if Teddy Bongwater <laughs> yeah. was the quarterback Absolutely. of the Panthers. <laughs> I, Coach, let me ask you this. If Teddy Bogwater was the quarterback of the Panthers, would you have picked them over the Jets? Yes. <laughs> I would I love I would, Teddy Two Gloves, man. I would have I also. I would have also. So, Broncos, Giants, this is a shit show. Crap shoot. I'm taking the Broncos. And I think Danny Dimes is. You know, I, here's my bold prediction. I hate that they call him Danny Dimes. <laughs> I do. Who the fuck is he ever throwing a dime? <laughs> <laughs> Danny Nichols. <laughs> uh, fucking okay, so Danny Nichols is gonna. <laughs> is, my bold prediction is he's gonna throw for eighty yards. Mister Nichols. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna go eight for twenty-seven and throw for eighty yards, no touchdowns, and two picks. And the Broncos win thirteen to ten. Cold Judy got. Yeah, I got Teddy two gloves. I don't know. I don't know much about these teams. Yeah. I don't have much trust in Saquon at the moment. Prove me wrong, Saquon, if you're listening. But uh at the moment <laughs> I mean at the moment I don't have much faith in the guy. Saquon, if you could you imagine he fucking retweets the video. He runs four hundred like like NFL rushing record be like Cole just showed you. I would I would love if he showed me and retweeted us. <laughs> Bard, who do you got? Uh I'm gonna have to go with Broncos right away, because I am a huge Barkley hater. I think he's trash. His injury is a zero. Dude gets hurt every play. I, he's just no. Giants are dog shit. Broncos all the way. Larry, who do you got? I'm taking Danny Dimes. No, Danny, Danny Nichols. Nichols. Yeah. <laughs> Danny Nichols, man. Yep, I hate to do it, but these two teams are just both dog. And I mean dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so bad, and uh, you know. When you look at this teams, you think star power. Who's got it? You got Von, <laughs> you got Von Miller. That's it. They got Chubb. And then Saquon Barkley. Chubb. Uh, Chubb ain't shit. Chubb is <laughs> better than anything no. the Giants got. And I just think Saquon and Kenny Galladay, if he plays, because Kenny Galladay is a damn dog, I think that is enough. Kenny, you don't mean shit there, do you? No. No, no Kenny Galladay is a dog, and that's just it. I mean, he's just... He's awesome. I think he's a great receiver. I think that would be enough to push push him past the Broncos. I think it's like 17-3. Or 13. 17-13. Close, but not All a right. good game. Coming up next. Oh. Yeah, is never mind. Not, uh, no, it's because it's, he picked Danny, Danny Nichols. I picked Danny Nichols. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> that, was whack of, that was a whack of you. All right. Freaky. Coming up next, we got a battle in the NFC between Green Bay and New Orleans. Now, I love Jameis Winston. Very excited for him to get an opportunity. And I just, I want to pick, I want to pick the Saints, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna take the backers. But I just, 
I just don't think Aaron Rodgers is like. You remember? You remember Jay Cutler? Obviously. Smoking Jay. Yeah, yeah. You remember? You remember when he would he would line up to play and he just looked like he didn't give a single fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that's gonna be like Aaron Rodgers to the, like this year, like he'll still throw for like three fifty, but he's just if he loses games this year, it's not gonna affect him as much. Didn't Jay Cutler and his wife get like a divorce and he sued her for like half of her money or yeah. something mm-hmm. like that? Mm-hmm. He was just on Theo's podcast not that long. No yeah. shit. Yeah, shout out to this past weekend <laughs> with Theo Vaughn. But, yeah, I'm going to take Green Bay over New Orleans, which Jameis, nothing but, this, uh, nothing but success. I think they're going to have a halfway decent season. But Cole, who do you got? I hate Jameis Winston. He's not going to do good. He's probably going to throw four picks. The LASIK eye surgery didn't do anything. Um, I'm going to choose uh, Green Bay. Barnage, who do you have? <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go Green Bay because I don't like Jameis Winston sucking on his fingers like a little baby. And uh, I think Aaron Rodgers is coming in this season on a revenge tour. I just, I could see him coming in breaking a lot of records, just trying to set a high pace for this next offseason. So if he does want to play for another team, he can ask for a crap load of money because he's a selfish prick. And he'll get it. And he'll get <laughs> it. It's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. So you got the, the Packers. Packers, 100%. Right. Laryl, who do you have? Well... I'll be honest with you here. I agree with Barn. I think Rodgers is going to be on another level this year. I think it's just about him being pissed off with the organization. I think he's really just going to play with the fire. He already won MVP last year, so why not run it back? And I think I'm locking it because I, Jameis Winston sucks, you know? I can't believe they're starting him over Taysom. I think Taysom could run more of an offense that's dual threat offense. I really don't right. like Jameis Winston. I think he's bound for 30-30 club yet again. I love Taysom. And um, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to throw a hat trick to Randall Cobb to open it back up. And Week then, one, bringing back his homie and getting it rolling. And that's just how it goes. It was at the seventh? So that's a seventh. Star frame! $5 charity of your choice. And uh, now... For the opening season, <laughs> Cole, Cole Jobles forgot. He's been doing this every season now, and and each week last year he 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 got he got better and better each week, and, and I think I think I think this year you know he's really trying to he's really trying this year to perfect perfect uh, his delivery where each week is just perfect. So, Cole, without further ado. <laughs> Why don't you get into it? <clears throat> Sunday night! How are you going to lie, dude? That was elite, honestly. That's that okay. It's a good way to start the season. That's a good that's way to start way, the season, that's but the way you like it. how am I going to do like the last game of the season? <laughs> I'm going to have to really top it. We're going to have we're gonna have to bring in Josh to do a guitar riff right before you hit it. You've been talking that since the beginning of season two. I know, two. but yeah. this is the time <laughs> for the fans. All right. And what a worse game to start off Sunday night <laughs> yeah. football. <laughs> I was saying that earlier, but the re- <coughs> the weeks after get really good. But Isn't coming, my game should have been time. I think, True. yeah, I can't believe it should have been flexed definitely for this game. So the Sunday night game is going to be the Chicago Bears against the L.A. Rams, and you know I got to watch a lot of Bears football this year because I got a bet going on the dream that that, that uh, Mooney. He thinks Mooney is going to have more receiving yards than our second leading receiver. And there is absolutely no fiscal way that's going to happen. And he also thinks David Montgomery is going to have more yards than James Robinson. Also no way that's going to happen. But I digress. There's a lot of former Jags players playing in this game, though, too, so I have a little bit of an interest. Plus, Matt Stafford gets to play his first game in a Rams jersey, and he gets a primetime game, something that Detroit didn't get a whole lot of when he was in Detroit, so I'm happy for him. And, you know, we, we shit on it now, but it could be all right. It could be all right. And the last hill that I'm willing to die on this season so I can get it out is Justin Fields is going to be the worst quarterback in, in this rookie draft class. Andy Dalton's supposed to get the start. Don't think we'll see him this week. I got the Rams. Or next week. Yeah. 
I got them winning this week. I got the Rams. Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking the Rams. Stafford, man. Yeah, you wrote that in your notes. I've seen it. fucking Stafford. <laughs> he's, a, it's, Stafford. He's, a, he's a fucking animal. Uh, I've always liked him. He's always given the Cardinals barn burner games. I respect the man. I think this is the best situation he's ever had in his whole career. He's got great receivers. He's got decent running backs. The offensive line's awesome. Aaron Donald. I mean, Jalen Ramsey, talk it up. I mean, this is the best team he's ever had. I think Justin Fields will see him in week three right after the Red Rocket gets a dub against the Bengals next week. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> And I just like the Rams. I think it's going to be a blowout. Blowout. Stafford sits by the four. Any bold predictions? Well, you know, I think Cooper Cut gets 150 yards. Ooh. Two touchdowns. Okay. Barnhouse, who do you got? Uh, the Bears have been bad for multiple years now, and I don't think they really improved much at all. The Rams were hard to beat in the past couple years, and Stafford makes that team even harder to beat. I think the Rams are going to demolish the Bears, make Red Rocket look really bad, and that'll be the opening door for Justin Fields, hopefully for that to blossom. Because I like Justin Fields. Thank you, he's garbage. Colch, <laughs> who do you got? I might agree with all of you. I, I, I really like the Rams this year. Uh, Matt Stafford, he definitely has something to prove. You know, he's been on the kind of a trash team his whole career. He's finally got, you know, a little bit more. So I think the Rams have this by, they're going to win by 17 points. And that's going to make our eighth star frame. Five dollars charity of your choice. On Sunday night. I think eight. That is a tie for the most star frames we've ever had. And I think that's that happened at the beginning of last year, too. I think I think star frames are more um, typical to happen during the early stages than the Absolutely. Late, <coughs> late stages. I honestly am surprised by as many in this week just because of how close called these games were. Really oh, we could have had way more if I just agreed with you. Yeah, True. Cole just trying to win the bitch. <laughs> He's coming out with the vengeance during season three. One or last. Yeah. <laughs> you encourage your last. And you coming, send it. coming up on Monday night, I think I think this might this might be a record setter. I think this game is almost conclusive. We got the Raiders and the Ravens. I will say, like I, I said earlier, Ariana was kind of our quick fire picks. So she she doesn't count on the podcast, but she'll she'll count in the description. She she picked the Raiders without a fucking second guess. So the Raiders. I mean, she's got one. They've got one fan in the building, but I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the Ravens over the Raiders. I mean, it is on, in the uh, Vegas Coliseum, oh, but man, I didn't even think about that. The black hole's gonna be crazy in Vegas. And there's going to be so many drunks in the black love, hole of the I would love Vegas. to go to a Raiders game now. Me too. I love honestly. that you brought that up. Huh? I love that you brought that up. Yeah. I totally forgot like, about that. Because my reasoning is going to even be improved because of that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and take Maybe Baltimore. we stadiums in the stadium. Baltimore in there. Lamar is going to go off, but Barnett, he got. I got the Raiders. Ooh. So, because the Ravens had a bunch of injuries at running back this week. It, they're dysfunctional right now. They're going to go into a very loud stadium with drunk fans. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be a good game for the Ravens. And Derek Carr, even though like a lot of people kind of trap on, he, he pulls off some sleeper games sometimes. He, he did against the Chiefs last year. I just There's no reason to doubt him. I think he can pull it off against the Ravens. Harold, who do you got? It's not that I doubt Derek Carr, but I doubt John Gruden. The man dismantled his offensive line in the offseason, traded every single one of them away. Even a guy who hasn't given up sacks in six years. He's just he's destroying this team. I can't believe Al Davis is letting him do it. I Al think, Davis is dead. Oh, no, well, well who? <laughs> 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 Al Davis' son. Yeah. What's his name? Carl. I don't know. I don't know. 
Well, you know what? It's Al Davis's fam la familia. Yeah. And uh Recipes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Anyway, uh, yeah, I just don't trust Gruden. I can't believe that he's got 10 years on him, and this team is not good. I don't like it. I don't like the direction they're going in, and I think the Ravens beat him by a shit ton. Call of Duty guy. Their feet vehicles, the only person, or one of the only quarterbacks to beat the Chiefs in the last few years. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's more. No, I. They're I've, playing in Vegas. Yeah. It's a new stadium. It almost makes sense. They got a DJ. It's all, it just almost makes so much sense for the Las Vegas Raiders to win this game. That's what I'm thinking. Wow, another another unlikely split. Didn't think that game was gonna split. So. I was thinking about the Ravens until until I realized that they had until it was a new team, basically Las Vegas. Bryce not, not gonna, I'm not going to lie. Bryce almost changed his pick when he found out Al Davis was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I changed uh, it right when I heard fucking Las Vegas. Not going to lie. Yeah. I was just I, expecting I mean, a, better management from the Raiders. They should fire Gruden for what he's doing. He drafted one lineman for three offensive starters last year. What kind of management is that? It's a tragedy. <laughs> That was gonna conclude our week one pick. So we didn't beat we didn't beat the star the star frame record. We tied it at eight. Okay. All I know is if if every single one of my picks goes right, well I only need three of them or four of them to go right. My division will be really good because I'll start off first in my division. Every single one of them will start off with a loss. <laughs> like, Do you think you took that into account during your picks, Barton? No, not really. I just really think the Raiders will beat the Ravens. The Bengals aren't ready, and I just don't like the Steelers. <laughs> fuck, fuck the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I'm with you. Colch, any last words Somebody before we head off the air? Uh, no, I just want everybody listening to uh, have a good rest of their day. Barn? Tell somebody you love them. <laughs> Larry? We'll see you next week. Love y'all. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, guys, thank you for tuning in to the NFL Picks, Locks, and Upset podcast. You guys have a great rest of your day.